welcome, welcome, welcome to the Extra Point Show. Your host, Mr. P.L. Coulter, in the house. Glad to have you with me. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. It is Tuesday, y'all. It's time to talk some sports. But before I do, I want to send a shout out to my boy, Jose Huerta, and the lovely Miss Nancy Garcia, host of Ayatu Sabis. Shout out to them uh, for hooking me up with the dope swag. You can catch Mr. Jose and Miss Nancy every Monday and Wednesday night on FBRN.us, Fishbowl Radio Network, for the Yatu Sabis show. Uh, so again, shouts out for the swag. Good looking out. I very much appreciate it. It fits. Feeling kind of felt, if I must say so myself. Good looking out, y'all. I will um, be looking forward to your show on Wednesday night. Now, in full disclosure, if, if you read the description of today's show, um, I just want you to know that yesterday I had a fantastic day. I had a fantastic weekend. I had a good night's sleep. So when I start going off on all of these topics that I have uh, lined up for you today, it's not because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or anything. It's just this stuff has been simmering down in my spirit, and I got to get it off my chest. And, and you know that I love getting this stuff off my chest with you. Um, so let's get started. Um, now the, the big news right now is the NCAA tournament. We are down to the final switch, uh, final 16, the sweet 16 is set. And, um, my thoughts of the first two rounds of the playoffs can be summed up with one simple request. Cinderella, will you please go S Y A D? somewhere for me for your boy cinderella i'm gonna need you to s-y-a-d and if you're not sure what that means that means sit your ass down i'm gonna need you to sit your ass down cinderella you've done enough <laughs> you've made your appearance now scram beat it go on get get on up out of here you're messing up the tournament now i'm sure like many of you who are looking at a broke busted and disgusted ncaa tournament bracket you're just like me. We're in the same boat. We're rolling on up the stream together. And with that being said, we're going to point the finger at one person and one person only. That is Cinderella. Now, for for the casual out there who who's not familiar with what Cinderella means in the world of sports, a Cinderella team is a, a team that's, uh, that's the heavy underdog, that's not projected to go very far. They should be just happy to have made the tournament um, they're the, the proverbial David to the Goliath, which is the Dukes, the Kentuckys, the Michigan States, the, the Gonzagas, those type of teams of the world. And in the world of college basketball, especially as it relates to the college basketball tournament, there, there there's two schools of thought, right, and the way that I see it. The first two rounds are for the casual fans, the people who just want to participate in their office pool bracket or the bracket with their friends and family or whatnot. And they kind of casually keep up with the games over the first uh, two um, rounds to see how well they're doing in their bracket. And once their bracket is busted, you know, they, they pretty much lose interest and stop watching. The Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the Final Four in the championship game is for the diehard sports fan. And the diehard sports fans want meaty, strong matchups between two Goliaths. We don't want to see David in the Sweet 16. We don't want to see David in the Elite Eight. We don't want to see David cutting down the damn nets. We want the teams that have played in the toughest conferences, that have the best players, the most NBA prospects, we want those teams to remain in the tournament. And if that was what you was wanting in this year's tournament, oh, you did not get your wish. <laughs> Cinderella blew up the joint. Let's just put it that way. Of the 16 teams remaining, there are more 10 seed or higher, more double-digit seeds left in the tournament than there are two and three seeds combined. Now, let this sink in for a second. There, out of a 68-team tournament, there are more teams that were slotted 10th or worse in their bracket in the Sweet 16 than there are teams that were selected 2nd or 3rd in their bracket. That makes for some horrible matchups in the Sweet 16, damn it. I mean, come on. Now, on Saturday, 
are you really trying to, to make appointment television for Oregon State and Loyola of Chicago? I mean, sure, yes, Sister Jean is a, is a great story, and, and we respect her as our elder, but ain't nobody trying to check for that. Forget all of that. Beat it, Sister Jean. Or how about Baylor and Villanova now? That is a one versus five, but the name value there for the average basketball fan is not there. You have a 15 seed in Oral Roberts versus Arkansas. Who wants to watch that on Saturday? And then finally, you have 11 seed Syracuse versus number two seed Houston. They threw that game on at 9 o'clock on TBS because they knew that CBS wouldn't be able to, to garner in the views to make that game palatable for them. Now, Sunday, it does get a little better with, with some of the names. Um, you have uh, undefeated Gonzaga uh, facing number five, Creighton. Creighton is a name that you may know from tournaments if you've done brackets before, but they're not any household names. You have 11 seed UCLA versus two seed Alabama. Okay, we'll give you that just based on uh, UCLA's history um, as a blue blood. And then you have a seven seed Oregon and a six seed USC playing on the West Coast late at night. Um, well, they're all in Indianapolis, but two West Coast teams playing late at night. Nobody cares. What the hell is this? The one marquee matchup that, that I can really say that, that goes for, for Sweet 16 weekend is fourth seed Florida State versus number one seed Michigan. The only bracket, the only region of the East region in which it actually went chalk from that side. They still have the number one, the number two, and the number four seed left in their region. So at least that bracket from the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, whatnot, should be pretty intriguing. Um, and speaking of Michigan, <laughs> shouts out to them on a, on a great victory last night um, over uh, LSU. But, uh, hello, the hell happened to the Big Ten? Shall I dare call them the Little Ten right now? And it hurts my heart saying that as a born and raised Big Ten affiliate and supporter. To the Michigan Mikes of the world, to the Tasha T. Sizzles of the world, to the Nick Torsley Famouses of the world, what the hell happened to our conference? They're, they're now the Little Ten. This past weekend was an absolute embarrassment for the Big Ten Conference, who has boasted all year long that they were the best deepest and most talented conference in the entire country. Now, the records and the rankings would bear that out on paper, but they all got waxed in the tournament. We should have known when Michigan State lost in that playing game that that was an ominous sign that, uh, that things were going to go wrong. Shouts out to Nancy Garcia. I love the shirt too, um, but no nipples poking out today. This is daytime uh, television. Shouts out to Jose, the shirt. <laughs> I've been working out. I was just telling Nancy, no nipples today, Jose. This is a daytime show. Maybe in the nighttime slot that you and Fancy Nancy in, I may, I may break out the pecs a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's fitting quite well. I'm very, very happy uh, to have this on. Shouts out to Yatu Sabes. Shout out to Nancy and Jose, two dope, dope radio hosts. you got to check out their show. Um, but Big Ten, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what? What is this? Now, the Big Ten had a near record nine teams selected to this year's NCAA tournament. Nine. Only one made it out of, of the first two rounds into the Sweet 16, and that was Michigan. And one could argue that as, even as big of a Michigan fan that I am, Michigan needed career days from two role players, a bench player and a role player, to, to squeak by an eight-seeded uh, Lu uh, Louisiana State University the hell big 10 what like the big 10 had two number one and two number two seeds and a number four seed ohio state smoked <laughs> you get beat by a 15 seed go sit down somewhere illinois uh smoked by Loyola chicago it wasn't even close they they were losing wire to wire by at least double digits got beat down a lot of people had them as the best team in the country smoked iowa yesterday got ran out of the gym by an Oregon team that was half their size. <laughs> you got the National Player of the Year in Luca Garza, and you can't get past Oregon. Is that what you mean to tell me? <laughs> is, that, is that what we're doing, Big Ten? Little Ten? Let me digress on that. Now, thank God for Michigan, who, like we always have to do in basketball, we have to come save the day. Um, 
But uh, but this is this is totally unacceptable if you're the Big Ten Conference. Now I will have Michigan Mike Michael Hasso on later in the week, and we're going to discuss this because we had a conversation uh, about this off wax before the tournament even started. I posed the question to him that if the Big Ten is so good every year, why haven't we had a, a national champion in the conference since 2000? We'll answer that question later on in the week. Um, but the Big Ten uh, teams themselves were, were not the only deplorable um, people out there affiliated with the conference. Let's talk about a couple of these fan bases in the Big Ten, shall we? Let's talk about you, Ohio State fan base. Let's talk about you, Illinois fan base. What the hell are y'all doing? Now, these are, what, 17 to 21-year-old kids out there playing their hearts out. They go through the same things that we go through. They're trying their best. They're trying hard to win. Us as fans, I know we get emotionally invested. And when you're in a one-and-done tournament, the finality of it all, when your team loses and you know that the season is over, can be quite uh, frustrating. I get that. But you grown ass men and women that's sending threatening letters and, and, and racist letters to these kids after they lose a basketball game, shame on you. Now, Ohio State star forward uh, EJ Liddell, right after their loss to Oral Roberts um, on Friday, uh, he posted screenshots of, of death threats that he received from his own fan base. Death threats, really, really. <laughs> Really, Ohio State fans, you gonna send that kid death threats when a kid had uh, a double double? He had what twenty and ten? Wasn't his fault that they lost, and even if it was his fault that they lost, so what? It's just a game. Calm down, and this is coming from a diehard sports fan. Yeah, uh, if you're a Titans fan, a Michigan fan, and a Memphis Grizzlies fan, you haven't sniffed the championship in almost thirty years. It's not going to push me to go threaten a kid over social media like that makes you some kind of tough guy. In Illinois, they did the exact same thing. The next day, uh, one of their star players, um, Kofi Cockburn, he he showed on his own social media page screenshots of threatening uh, posts that he got as well. They're bringing his parents into it. They're bringing his race into it. He's Jamaican, uh, born, raised in New York. I mean, come on now, y'all. Y'all old asses need to get a grip. <laughs> if you decided to bet money on some teenagers um, in an unpredictable venue like the NCAA tournament, that's on you. Threaten to kill yourself. <laughs> what are you trying to threaten these kids for? You look like a sucker. And by the way, have you seen uh, Kofi Cockburn? Google him after, after this live. And have you seen EJ Liddell? We're talking about a 6'10", a 6'11", kid, 250 pounds of muscle, Works out every day and has the conditioning of a cheetah. And you keyboard warriors threatening him with physical violence and, and, and death? Wishing the man dead? I need y'all to go sit down. You're a loser. <laughs> you are a loser. You're a loser. I'm sorry. That's that's just that's just how it, how it rolls with that. You're a damn loser. Um. Now, who else is a loser right now? And, and y'all, I'm gonna need y'all to help me with this because this this one hurts. This one hurts my heart. And that's LeBron Tyrell James, our king. Yes, our king. And while we're telling people to sit their ass down, Solomon Hill, why don't you join the fray? Your old ass rolled up on LeBron James on a totally unnecessary play over the weekend. Rolled up on his ankle. He has a high ankle sprain, and now he's out for at least the next month. 36-year-old LeBron James, who's having an MVP season, now is going to miss basically the, the, the second half of the, of the regular season because some no-name by the name of Solomon Hill, a journeyman who's played for half the league, decides to dive on the floor for a ball right into LeBron James' ankle and sprain his ankle. High ankle sprain. Out for a month. Now, the Lakers are already missing Anthony Davis, who's been out since Valentine's Day with a, an Achilles strain. Now, I get it. With an Achilles strain, you have to be extra careful. I get it. We all saw what happened to Kevin Durant two years ago in the NBA Finals when he tried to come back from an Achilles strain, and he wound up tearing the Achilles and missing an entire season after that. Now, this is not a shot at AD or a rush to bring him back. 
But my question is, where the hell are all the king's horsemen? Where are all the king's men? Have y'all seen the Lakers without Anthony Davis and LeBron James these last two games? Como se dice boo-boo in Espanol? Como se dice trash in Espanol? Como se dice getting they ass whooped up and down the court in Espanol? Yo no sé. See, you already know, I, I pick up a couple of things living down here in Texas. Pick up a couple of things. Um, But where are all the kings? horses and all the king's men now in the offseason the the lakers were touted for upgrading their roster they got rid of uh, uh javel mcgee they got rid of dwight howard they got rid of uh playoff uh rondo rajon rondo who all played significant roles in their title run in the bubble last year got rid of them replaced them with montrez harrell formerly of the clippers replaced them with dennis schroeder via trade and brought over mark gasol uh who's Got nothing left in the tank. His tank is is light, bright yellow. Uh, that little bulb that says, uh, you know, you got two miles until you run out, bruh. And he's on the middle of the highway. Uh, he's done. And the the Lakers look deplorable without LeBron and AD in the lineup. Now, now first of all, the tragedy of this all is if LeBron James misses a month, which is what most people are prognosticating that he's going to miss a month of action then in this condensed NBA season, that's 17 games. If LeBron James comes back in, a, in exactly one month, which, is, which would be 17 games, that means that he would come back on April the 24th against the Dallas Mavericks, which is a primetime Saturday night game on ABC. And we all know how LeBron loves the, the flair for the dramatic. So if I had to guess, if he's going to be out a month, that might be his target date to get back, to come back on national television. But let's look at some of these games that he has between now and then. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans tonight, that's a loss. Philadelphia after that, that's a loss. Cleveland, eh. Orlando, eh. Milwaukee, that's a loss. Sacramento, that's a toss-up. The Clippers, that's a loss. Toronto, loss. Miami, loss. Brooklyn, loss. The New York Knicks, loss. Now, Charlotte is without uh, LaMelo Ball for the rest of the year with a fractured wrist. So that's a toss-up. Boston, loss. Back-to-back -back games versus Utah, losses. Back-to-back -back games versus Dallas, losses. Or at least favored to lose those games. Now, I don't know if you looked at the Western Conference standings in a while, but the Lakers don't have that big of a cushion over the 10th uh, spot, which is held by the Memphis Grizzlies right now. They have a six-and-a-half game lead over the Memphis Grizzlies, who currently hold the final playing spot at number 10. Did you hear all those losses I just rattled off? <laughs> or pot potential losses? If Memphis catches fire, if, if New Orleans catches fire, if Dallas continues to stay healthy and, and catch fire like they like they should uh, with the healthy Kristaps Porzingis and a healthy uh, Luka, LeBron and him can find themselves fighting for a playoff spot when he comes back. And guess what? There's only, what, 12 games? left after he comes back against some worthy opponents and there's going to take some ramp up time we don't know if ad will be back at that time could the lakers possibly go from champions to missing the playoffs all together oh no say it ain't so say it ain't so king where the hell are all the king's horses and all the king's men I don't know. All I know is Solomon Hill, if I catch you in the streets, you're going to catch these hands. I'm going to have to go on and rock with you one time for for for, for knocking the, the Lakers totally off course and, and LeBron off course for a fifth NBA um, MVP and for his fifth NBA title. You hear me? You hear me, Solomon Hill? I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it. You're going to ruin the NBA playoffs for everybody. Damn it. <laughs> that gummit. Um. So yeah, I just wanted to to check in with you today to get a little bit of those things off my chest. Let you know we'll be back the remainder of the week. We got some special guests lined up for you throughout the rest of the week. We'll bring Michigan Mike back on on Friday. We got Wednesdays with Tasha T. Sizzle. You know that's always a hoot. And uh, we got plenty of football, basketball, and tournament talk to get through the remainder of the week. Um, until then, I want you to make sure you do me a favor. 
when you pass by a mirror today, make sure you look that person in the eyes, wink, and tell that person to stare back at you, I love you. And, and speaking of which, I love you. And I'm wishing you a great, awesome, and prosperous day. Whatever it is that's on your plate to eat, hey, that's what you signed up for. Let's get to grubbing. It's your boy PL. I will holler at y'all tomorrow.